All right, good morning. This is Dr. Knotts, and today I want to give you the second lecture on wraiths. This one is on wisps. The first type of wraith that we discussed is a demonic presence, and that's where you can just see a dark shadow. It comes and goes. It's fleeting, and you can feel a presence of evil within the room. <clears throat> this second one, the wisp, is a little bit different. It's when the wraith has a bit more authority, tries to be deceptive usually, and manifests itself so that you can not only sense its presence, but you know it's there. Let me give you an example. I uh, was contacted by a psychologist, um, not a Christian psychologist either, or actually it was a psychiatrist, from a clinic just a few cities over from where I was pastoring in Illinois. <clears throat> And he asked if I would take a client of his, and he would meet me there. And the reason is, is this person had went to him because uh, her husband took her there because he thought he had mental, she had mental problems. And she told the psychiatrist about how this thing was materializing. She'd know it was coming because it had the sweet smell of flowers in the room. It was sitting on the bed next to her, becoming more aggressive. <clears throat> she at first thought it was her husband, and she was trying to sleep so she wouldn't, you know, respond. She would tell him to leave her alone and stuff. Um, so this was a wisp, but it was in the form of an uh, a succubus, or an incubus, as it's often called. And succubus and incubus fall under the guise of wraith. They're demons of hatred, and malevolence, and violence. <clears throat> so the psychiatrist... Because this, had, she said, been going on for literally night after night, during the day even, when she would go to lay down or when she'd walk into the room, she would just smell the room being filled with flowers, and it was beginning to frighten her. And um, so her husband took her to see the psychiatrist, because <clears throat> he thought his wife had mental problems. And the psychiatrist, in order to prove to the wife that it wasn't real, went to the house. And um, fortunately for her, it manifested while he was there. Now, he wouldn't go into the house with me. Um, you know, he'd been raised Catholic, and he didn't believe in the supernatural. He didn't. He said he didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in devils and angels, that um, he believed in science, and that it was something that could be explained. But he called me because he had heard that I had the ability to deal with such things. And um, I used to do a lot for the Catholic Church out of Chicago. The North Diocese used to send me people and refer to me homes quite a bit. There was a heck of a lot of demonic presences in many of the homes in Chicago and in the Catholic Order. <clears throat> so anyway, when I went there, I asked them for authority to pray over both of them and for them and for the home. And when I did, it instantly manifested. I mean, the room filled with flowers and the temperature dropped though a good 20 30 degrees so I, I looked at him and I said you have a, a wraith it's a wisp now when a wisp enters a home it makes its presence known it will try to be deceptive um, in this case it was trying to have relations with the female and um, they do this in order to create strongholds to gather DNA. Sometimes they're sent by people in the occult to gather DNA from individuals through their uh, RNA and climax, etc. But when I prayed, it God had revealed to her that the reason why it was there is she had gone to see a uh, fortune teller. Her husband would leave for trips and go on hunting vacations with his friends and she would go to this fortune teller to find out if he was committing adultery. And this demon tagged her or went home with her from the fortune teller. You can't dabble in the occult and not be affected. So we cleansed her home. Wisps will often take the form of what we'd call a low-level incubus or incubus that doesn't have enough authority to begin exalting the person. Um, I've been in homes where a wisp or a wraith, you know, a wisp, had manifested and the house would stink um, just out of nowhere the smell of sulfur where you thought the house had a methane leak or was going to blow up and once again that had been summoned because the uh, teenager that lived in the home had been doing ritual magic with candles 
And uh, parents, I don't know if they knew about it or not, but they didn't seem concerned about it. Uh, most people don't want to know what their teenager is doing, and they don't see any harm in Ouija boards or Wiccan cards or, you know, tarot cards or any source of divining. But a wisp will manifest in many different ways. Um, it will either try to make you accept it by manifesting in a way that's pleasing, pleasing to the senses. I've met many individuals that have had wisps that would manifest as sexual lovers or incubus for females, succubus for males. Um, when they get authority, they then become more malignant and they take on the form of the demonic presence um, that manifests itself in the third form, which is basically the demonic presence and it manifests in a physical form. It, become, it manifests as a demon of death when it tries to take your life. That's the fourth and the final most powerful aspect of the raid. I had an individual who was a male um, who began fantasizing in his dreams about having sex with multiple women and he began climaxing at night and he would wake up and he woke up and seen the images leaving him. You know, I've met many men that have had woken up and had tremendous sexual dream and then only to see an image of somebody on them or an entity. Well, this man not only was a frightened, he invited them back and welcomed them. And they would manifest, physically manifest during the day and he would have sex with them. Um, but the problem is, is he began losing his mind. And they began assaulting his wife and children. And so I was contacted by him um, and his wife. They were referred to me from across the country. And so I flew out to them and um, basically helped to get rid of them. So they would, because I mean, at one point they had picked the infant up out of the crib and fling it across the room and physically assault the female because she would pray and such. So they will try to attach themselves to you or get a stronghold in you to control you by becoming friends with you. And it can be not only sexual, uh, that's when it's an incubus or succubus, but it can do it also through the sweet smell. Um, I had an individual whose husband died, and they said he's been coming back to me at night. Well, my friend, that's not him. That's a wisp. And because it wasn't fully manifested, it was in spiritual form, but his smell and everything about him would be there. It was a demon. It was trying to gain favor. They do this in order to try to enter into you or open a doorway for others to enter into you. Many, most of the time, they're just used there to open a door to create a stronghold, and, and then they, they get more aggressive. Their final and, and ultimate goal is, is to try to either have you commit suicide drive you crazy, where they take control of your mind and you lose the ability to rational thought and action, or they basically have you give yourself over to them. And it's not uncommon at that point for them to enter in fully and create what's called the doppelganger or the evil twin, to where when you are so worn out and you go to sleep, they take over your mind, your body wakes up, and they live through you. So this is Dr. Knotts. The second aspect of a wraith is called the wisp. Whips are identified by their presence in the room. They're spiritual. You don't physically get to see them, except maybe as a wisp of smoke or as a form. They will often be accompanied by a scent. It can be beautiful flowers, can be the smell of something familiar, can be the stench of sulfur. It's very common for the room to change temperature. Usually it gets colder. I mean, so cold, oftentimes you can see your breath in the room, even though the furnace is on and it's summertime. Wisps don't just happen. They have to be invoked or summoned or sent. People in the occult will often find individuals to test their magic out on. And so they will send demonic spirits, such as wraiths or wisps, to go and, and afflict or gather things from other individuals. They try to get the DNA from somebody through, you know, having them climax in their sleep and have the demon bring it back 
so they can then use it in rituals where they'll try to gain hair from the body or other types of fluid. Even uh, things you've smoked, you know, the cigarette butt with your DNA on it. So if you're having a wisp problem, pray and ask the Lord to reveal to you why it's there. It would be better if you found somebody to pray with. Um, I wrote a book called The Little Book of Prayers. It's over 300 pages. It's The Little Book of Prayers. Um, I had an individual just this week telling me it's a book that every Christian should have. And in it I put prayers because you have to be taught. The church has forgotten how to teach its people how to pray. But in it are prayers for those coming out of the occult or those that are involved in spiritual warfare. In it it will tell you the prayers. You can pray them with somebody to be freed from your curse and your demonic assignment. For those of you wanting a little heavier reading, I wrote a book called Contending for the Faith. And you can get it on Amazon or any book dealer. And it teaches you about these demonic spirits, everything from doppelgangers um, to mind control programming and how the demonization happens within the mind. But curses, generational curses. It's something the church has forgotten about, but yet is ever present. And as children of God, God always raises up warriors to help those in need. So this is Dr. Knotts. I pray that you've been blessed by this. I pray that the Lord touches you. It works within your life and heart. Our next one will be on the demonic presence when the wraith physically manifests. And um, I hope you never have that encounter. If you do, and I'm still alive, go ahead and contact me, and I'll see if I can help you or find somebody to pray with you. I've, I've written everything in, in form, and you can download it or get it however you want. In Christ's name, Lord bless you.